folks, welcome to the Prepared Homestead. This is Travis. Thank you all for stopping by to watch. Have a lot of stuff in the news today to cover. A uh, lot of uh, globalist, new world order kind of stuff. Um, financial stuff, food stuff, uh, and just, just a little bit in the mix. So we'll get into that here in just a minute. I want to start off first letting you know about some prepper groups that might be in your area. You know, some of you don't like it when I do this. You say it just takes too much time. But really, this is one of the big emphasis of this channel, is trying to do the best we can to bring people together in communities. So when I mention these, if you don't like it, I don't know what to tell you, but I'm not gonna stop doing it. Uh, I guess you can just go watch another channel. But I think that this is a good thing, and there's a lot of people that are starting to come together because of this. So if you have a local group meeting that you want me to announce, certainly send it to me. Uh, the first one is in the state of Texas. Yes, I, I, it's a, I know it's a big shock that there might be a prepper or two in the state of Texas. Uh, this one is down in the Corpus Christi area. So if you are in the Corpus Christi area and you would like to find out more about this group that meets down there, uh, there'll be a, that's right, email popping up right here. Uh, and you can email them and they will, you know, get in touch with you about when their meeting schedule is so that you can participate uh, in them or with them. That's in the Corpus Christi, Texas area. So uh, certainly if you're around that part of the country, give them an email. The next one is in the state of Arizona. Now, <sighs> nothing against you Arizonans. I've met a few of you, several of you. You're good people. But you got some issues in your state when it comes to voting. And so maybe if you're in Arizona, you need to go to one of these kind of meetings. Um, this one is west of Tucson, kind of in that area. Um, and they will be, their next one is scheduled on November 17th, okay? So they meet every month, uh, kind of west of Tucson, Arizona. The next one is November 17th. Uh, that meeting is gonna be held from five to 7 p.m. And again, email should be popping up somewhere right around here. Uh, and you can send that person an email asking about details. Uh, this is a, an established group uh, that meets on a regular ba basis. So uh, they will, you know, they talk about different things every month. And uh, the main thing is, is that you should go if you live in that area so that you can find other like-minded people. I mean, that's, that's the biggest, biggest benefit. It's not so much the class that might be being held or some speaker, you know, special speaker or anything like that. That's not really the point of going to one of these. That's kind of an added benefit. The point is, is to go and meet other people like you so that you can make connections. Uh, this here has been flo floating around uh, for the last couple of days. Had a couple of people email me asking why I haven't talked about it. And it's not because I didn't want to talk about it. It's because I've been kind of Kind of trying to figure out how legitimate it is uh, because when i first saw it it was on some sources that aren't necessarily the most solid sources but it does seem to be pretty legitimate and that is um this uh group being led by potentially the pope i guess uh that is going to come up with or they already have uh the the new ten commandments this is the ten commandments uh for uh, the climate repentance, okay? Uh, it's being led by uh, several groups. This one here, this, this uh, particular article is in an Israeli paper, so it's kind of focusing more on uh, the Israelis that are part of it, but Jews, Christians, Muslims, Hindus, and Buddhists are all part of this. Uh, and their, their plan was originally to um, go to Mount Sinai. Uh, Mount Sinai is where uh, Moses was given the Ten Commandments originally by uh, God in heaven, and they wanted to go there, but from what I have gathered, the Egyptian government, which controls that area, would not allow them uh, to go actually up to the mountain. So um, it's been done not going, and that's probably what a lot of you have heard, that they were going to Mount Sinai. From the information I was reading, they were not allowed to, so they didn't actually do that. Um, but um, nevertheless, uh, they have issued a new Ten Commandments for uh, climate change, uh, asking, it says here, an initiative, asking God's forgiveness for harming the creation. Um, I read their Ten Commandments, and it's very, um, how to put it lightly, a very New Age-ish sounding thing. 
Uh, and you know, I just got to make this one little comment. Um, I don't believe in judging anyone based upon their religion, okay? Um, it doesn't mean that I think that all religions are great. They're all going to, you know, all that kind of stuff. That's not what I'm saying. Uh, I don't believe in judging anyone particular based on their religion. I, you know, if I do any judging of anyone, it's based on their personal moral character. That's where it lies. Um, so I don't want to hear anyone saying that, well, it's because of this person. It's because of the Catholics. It's because of the Jews. It's because of the Muslims. It's because, it's because of people, okay? People. People are the problem. And yes, there are some religions that are not the best, but I'm not here to judge them. Let's get into some financial stuff, economic stuff, because as we all know, we are experiencing the strongest and best, greatest economy in American history. Um, right here, this is this, this list here, this is from this year. This is what's happened so far. We've had two consecutive quarters of negative GDP, the lowest earnings growth since the third quarter of 2020. So that's the, the whole, you know, pandemic lockdown, okay? Since, since that happened, since we locked everything down and everything come to a crashing halt for that little while, it's been the lowest since then. Uh, the fastest falling housing market since 2011, there's been $2 trillion in crypto losses and the collapse of FTX and potentially more. Uh, and yet the Fed is still just saying that this is just a soft landing, folks. It's just a soft landing. Here's another chart to kind of emphasize their soft landing. This is the S&P 500. Um, it has had its worst performance in real terms since 1872. This chart goes all the way back to the late 1800s. And you can see in this chart <clears throat> the panic of 1907, World War I, the Great Depression, World War II, oil shock of the 1970s, 9-11, uh, and yet the worst, the worst performance has been this year. So through all that, we've had the worst performance this year. That should say a lot to you. Following with the same theme here, buying conditions for houses have now declined to the lowest level in history. The lowest level since they've been keeping records. H housing conditions for buying have been at the lowest level. And we have the strongest economy in history, folks. The strongest, the best, best economy in history. U.S. Secretary Janet Yellen says that if Russia cuts off the exports, that the U.S. could draw from its strategic petroleum reserves because we have so much. I mean, we've already used up a third of it this year. We have so much of it. Might as well just drain it all. I mean, you know, let's instead of, let's just drain the swamp by draining the, the oil preser reserves. I mean, that, that totally makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> this one is, it's, it's still looming. It's still out there. And it still has the potential of causing real catastrophic damage to our economy, to our supply chain, and, and just to the country as a whole. And that is this rail strike. Uh, there's a, a upcoming rail vote that some of these experts, this is a union official saying that they're expecting it to fail. And it's going to raise the threat once again of the strike. So they're, they're still trying to hash it out. They're still trying to come to some kind of a green agreements here, but it doesn't look good. Uh, union official is saying doesn't look good. Something else that doesn't get talked about enough is the Mississippi River. Kind of like the old Hank Jr. song, it's going dry. Mississippi River has shrunken so much that it's slowing U.S. food exports when the world needs them the most. Now, there was some reports a week or so ago that had come up a little bit because there had been some, some of the rains. Uh, but that seems to have just been a temporary rise, and that was only in certain areas. It is still at historic levels, historic levels, as it's drying up, and it's making it difficult to move food and other things, but a lot of food. It's making it difficult to move a lot of food because as modern as we are with all of our technology, um, a lot of stuff still moves a very old-fashioned way on barges up and down that big great river and it's drying up uh, and uh, it's causing a lot of problems and unless something changes where there's more water it's going to cause even more problems it's interesting that uh, this past year 
uh, it was in the news earlier in the year that California was wanting to figure out a way to uh, get water from the Mississippi River and move it over to California. Now there's some speculation that that may be happening and that might be the reason why, or one of the reasons why, I, I'm not gonna speculate that. But it's interesting that that's what they want to do with a river that's already drying up. Biden administration has issued a new memo uh, to agencies directing them to examine national security threats in food and agriculture. <clears throat> now I read through it and it's, it's not a whole lot of real big deal, but it just, I think in, it shows us that there is a threat there uh, and, and that there's a concern there that something could happen. You know, this wasn't a, a, a very well publicized uh, memo that he sent to agencies. So usually when they do things that doesn't catch a lot of news, it's probably something to watch. And so the belief is, or the, the memo's belief is, is that uh, there is a security issue when it comes to our food, uh, agriculture, and, and, and to, to put focus on that, which usually means that they're gonna focus on making it worse. Uh, yeah, a lot of people are talking about this, this FTX stuff, I mentioned it yesterday. Uh, I, I, again, I'm not, a, I'm not a big cryptocurrency guy. It doesn't mean that I don't understand it. I'm just not a big cryptocurrency guy, that's all. Some people think, that, you know, I've had some comments that, you know, you don't understand crypto. I understand it. I've, I've been reading and following it since Bitcoin first came out. Um, I'm just not into it, okay? It's, it's, it's just a fiat. It's not even a currency. It's a fiat something. It's just made up. I understand people have become millionaires, but there's a lot of people recently that's losing their shirt. And uh, this collapsed cryptocurrency exchange, FTX, uh, it's, it's been pretty well confirmed now that that has had ties with Ukrainian government, the World Economic Forum, and top Biden officials. Uh, again, there's a lot of speculation that it was used as a kind of money laundering service. Uh, for U.S. taxpayer funds being sent to Ukraine. Ukraine was taking that money and investing it in FTX, and it's potential that that money turned around and came back to the states, to the Democratic Party. Uh, it was also a, one that the World Economic Forum was, was praising, was, was really you know, praising this. As, along with FTX, another one called Crypto.com. A lot of people online are saying, get your money out of there if you haven't already because it looks like it could be next. Um, that's not me saying that. I'm just repeating what's being talked about online and you need to choose, make your own decision of what to do if you have any funds in crypto.com. Moving on to global things, Putin has signed a decree allowing for military conscription of foreign citizens, meaning that uh, if you're a foreign citizen and you're in the nation of Russia, you could be uh, sent off to war, whether you like it or not. Uh, so it just shows that there's their planning. Now, uh, are we planning? Well, not really. The United States really isn't planning. We're, we're planning on sending lots of money to Ukraine and eventually Taiwan and North Korea and Japan and, and Europe and places like that. But are we planning our military to, to really gear up for a major global war with major Really capable adversaries, not really so much. I mean, we've got a lot of uh, critical race stuff going on in our ranks. They're, they're teaching them that. There's a lot of uh, teaching them to accept different genders and how to use pronouns, um, but not a lot of real planning when it comes to be becoming more battle ready. Uh, the CIA um, met with its counterpart from Russia in Turkey. Uh, it would be interesting to be a fly on that wall. And basically what the news is reporting that uh, the CIA warned its counterpart in Russia that there would be consequences if Russia did any kind of nuclear weapons use in Ukraine. Any kind, any, any type of weapons use in Ukraine, there would be major consequences. Uh, I mean, kind of like there was going to be major consequences if Russia invaded Ukraine, I guess. United States, uh, here we go again with, you know, spending our money and giving our support all over the world, not taking care of ourselves. The United States, Japan, and South Korea have discussed a coordinated move in the event of a North Korean nuclear test. So even if they test, we're not saying if they use one, like against someone, if they just test a nuclear weapon, the United States, Japan, and South Korea are talking about what they will do to punish them for that. 
Uh, and in the last little bit here, this one's, who knows what will have will come out of this. But Xi Jinping is visiting Saudi Arabia once again. Well, he's he's getting around the world. Have you noticed that? Have you noticed that in the last six, 12 months? How many times we hear, oh, Xi Jinping traveling all over the place. I mean, he's been all over the Middle East. Uh, he, he's been everywhere because he's developing his uh, allies. He, he's, he's solidifying his alliances and, and getting everyone set up with their marching orders. Well, he's met again or is meeting again with Saudi Arabia, uh, the Saudi minister reports, where they will be discussing trade and security. And I'm sure their new currency that they're going to be unveiling, the BRICS currency, uh, to compete with the United States dollar. And once again, I might remind you that most experts say that the only thing that gives the U.S. dollar its value anymore, it's not even so much the faith in it, it's not even so much the U.S. military's presence, it's the fact that it is the global reserve currency and the petrodollar, all of that tied to the oil coming out of Saudi Arabia. And if they stop using the U.S. dollar for their oil in Saudi Arabia, we could see some serious crashing going on in the U.S. dollar. That, that would be epically bad. Uh, I, I've not seen anyone, anyone say that it would be okay, that it would be a good thing or that it would cause no harm uh, if Saudi Arabia starts dumping the U.S. dollar. That could be bad. Um, along with many other things that we talk about on here that are all equally bad. Uh, folks, <laughs> It's not to scare you. It's not to, to terrify you. It's to encourage you to get your houses in order. It's to encourage you to become as self-sufficient as possible, to prepare mentally, physically, and spiritually. Because as we're learning every day more and more, the world is kind of falling apart around us. And your choices are to fall apart with it, to be drugged down with it, or to be as self-sufficient and as resilient as you can so that you can continue to stand as everything falls apart around you. Folks, thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.